Lesson 10 Unity Shaders Hello fellow game designers, welcome to the Wicked Cat Unity Introduction course. Today we are going to study the last shader family, the reflective shaders. Step 5 Reflective Shader Family On this shader family we include Reflective Vertex Lit Reflective Diffuse Reflective Specular Reflective Normal Mapped Reflective Normal Mapped Specular Reflective Parallax Reflective Parallax Specular Reflective Normal Mapped Unlit Reflective Normal Mapped Vertex Lit the reflective shaders allow you to use a cube map which will be reflected on the mesh where the material is applied. It allows you to define areas of more or less reflectivity on your objects through the alpha channel of the base texture. High reflectivity is a great effect for glosses, oils, chrome, etc. Low reflectivity can add effect for metals, liquid surfaces, or video monitors. To use the reflective vertex lit shader, you will need one base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas, and one reflection cube map for reflection map. All lights shining on it are rendered in a single pass and calculated at vertices only. This shader is usually cheap to render. Next, on the reflective diffuse shader, you will need one base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas, and reflection cube map for reflection map. Diffuse computes a simple lighting model. The lighting on the surface decreases as the angle between it and the light decreases. The lighting depends only on this angle, and does not change when the camera moves or rotates. To use the reflective specular shader, you will need a base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas and specular map combined. You will also need one reflection cube map for reflection map. Specular computes the same simple lighting as diffuse, plus a viewer dependent specular highlight. This highlight is dependent on surface angle, light angle, and viewing angle. You can control the level of blur for the highlight with the shininess slider in the inspector. Additionally, the alpha channel of the main texture acts as a specular map, defining which areas of the object are more reflective than others. Black areas of the alpha will be zero specular reflection, while white areas will be full specular reflection. For reflective normal mapped shader, you will need one base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas, one normal map and one reflection cube map for reflection map. Like the reflective diffuse shader, this computes the same simple lighting model. The normal mapping simulates small surface details using a texture, instead of spending more polygons to actually carve out details. The normal map effectively overrides the mesh's geometry when calculating lighting for the object. For reflective normal map specular shader, you will need one base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas and specular map combined, one normal map, and one reflection cube map for reflection map. This shader works exactly like the reflective normal mapped but adds specular to it. Specular computes the same simple lighting as diffuse, plus a viewer dependent specular highlight. This highlight is dependent on surface angle, light angle, and viewing angle. You can control the level of blur for the highlight with the shininess slider in the inspector. Additionally, the alpha channel of the main texture acts as a specular map, defining which areas of the object are more reflective than others. Black areas of the alpha will be zero specular reflection, while white areas will be full specular reflection.
Next, on the reflective parallax shader, you will need one base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas, one normal map, one height map and one reflection cube map for reflection map. Parallax normal mapped is the same as regular normal mapped, but with a better simulation of depth. This depth is achieved through the use of a height map. The height map is contained in the alpha channel of the normal map. In the alpha, black is zero depth and white is full depth. For the reflective parallax specular, you will need a base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas and specular map, plus a normal map, one height map and one reflection cube map for reflection map. This shader is very similar to the last one, but adds the specular to the material. Specular computes the same simple lighting as diffuse, plus a viewer dependent specular highlight. This highlight is dependent on surface angle, light angle and viewing angle. You can control the level of blur for the highlight with the shininess slider in the inspector. Next, for reflective normal mapped unlit shader, you will need one base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas, one normal map, and one reflection cube map for reflection map. This shader does not use normal mapping in the traditional way. Because the shader does not use lights, the normal map does not affect any lights shining on the object. The normal map will only distort the reflection map. Finally, for the reflective normal mapped vertex lit shader, you will need a base texture with alpha channel for defining reflective areas, one reflection cube map for reflection map, and one normal map. This shader is a good alternative to reflective normal mapped. If the object doesn't need to be affected by pixel lights, but you still want the reflection to be affected by a normal map, this is the right shader to use. Since this shader is vertex lit, is rendered more quickly than its reflective normal mapped counterpart. This was our final video on Unity 3D shader families. Remember to try the different types of shaders on your materials and look for the ones that give you best results. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to our channel. If you have any doubts or feedback, leave it on the comment section below. Until next time, and keep doing awesome games.